Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the first half of histology in the lab, and that's going to be over the epithelial tissues. And then in the next video, we'll cover connective tissues. So first, let's take a look at epithelial tissue. So epithelial tissue is made up of epithelial cells, and the tissue itself is classified by the cell shape and the number of cell layers. Okay? So every time we name one of these tissues, we're going to have something indicating the cell shape and something indicating the number of layers. So for cell shape, there's really three kinds. Okay? There are cells called squamous cells. Squamous cells basically have the shape of a pancake. So if you were f cooking a pancake on the stove, it's roughly going to be that shape. It's going to be maybe circular or oval or something like that, and then it's going to be flat. The second shape is cuboidal. That's actually what these cells more or less are down here. Cuboidal cells are going to be cubic, uh, but when we look at them, we're going to see them in two dimensions, so they're going to be more square-shaped. And then the third type is columnar. So columnar comes from the term that they're column-like cells. So these cells are going to be taller, and they're going to be basically longer than they are wide, so tall and thin. The second way to classify them is the number of layers in the tissue. So if we have a simple epithelial tissue, that's going to have one layer of cells. This one right here is going to be one layer of cells. This would be simple. Okay? But there's some that we'll have that are stratified. Stratified means there are more than one layer, and in general it's many, many, many layers. Okay? Too many to really count. Okay? So simple is one layer, stratified is many layer. Okay? And for, for the most part, epithelial tissue is going to have these characteristics right here. So epithelial cells are usually going to be superficial cells, meaning they're going to be on one side facing an opening or what we call a lumen. So a lumen is just an opening. Okay? So for example, a lumen could be of a blood vessel. This is where blood is running through. Okay? Um, it could also be the lining of the GI tract, your digestive tract, so where food runs through. But epithelial cells, or the tissue, tends to line the lumen. And the side of the epithelial cells that face the lumen is the apical surface. Okay? So notice there's this side of each of these cells. This is the apical surface of the epithelial cells. On the other side is what we call the basement membrane. And the basement membrane actually fuses each of the epithelial cells to underlying connective tissue. Okay? So it's very common for epithelial cells to, on one side, be facing an opening called a lumen, and then on the other side, they're going to be uh, facing connective tissue. Okay? And then the side of the cells that faces the connective tissue is the basement membrane. The side that faces the lumen is the apical surface. And we're going to see these uh, repeated over and over again in a lot of the slides. Again, here's a look at how we can combine some of these uh, ways to classify epithelial tissues. So up here we have the number of layers. Over here we have the cell shape. So for example, if we have simple squamous epithelium, simple implies there's one layer, and then squamous implies they're pancake-shaped cells. They're flat. So we can see here there's one layer of this. So this would be termed simple squamous epithelium. Here's one layer of square-shaped cells, so this would be simple cuboidal epithelium. But notice over here, we have more than one layer, or many layers. So these are stratified cells, but they're pancake-shaped, so it is stratified squamous epithelium. Okay? And there's one weird one, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. All right? But hopefully this makes sense. In this lab, we are not going to be looking at stratified cuboidal or stratified columnar. Let's look at some of the specific tissues themselves. The first one we're going to cover is simple squamous epithelium. Okay, so there's two ways you can look at the tissue. One of the ways is looking at it from the top. This is sort of an aerial view, I would say. Okay? So if you were looking at a cell like this, it's kind of like looking at the pancake from the top. So if you're cooking pancakes on the stove and you're looking down at it, you see things that roughly look like this. Okay? Each one of these is one epithelial cell of the simple squamous epithelium. Okay? So let's look at this cell right here, for example. Okay? The dark spot in the center of each of these cells, this is the nucleus of each cell. Notice each one of these simple squamous cells has a nucleus. Okay? If we look at this lighter purplish area around the nucleus, that's going to be the cytoplasm of each cell. And then these borders that you can see surrounding all these cells, like right here, 
This is the plasma membrane of each of these cells. Okay, So this would be one view of simple squamous epithelium. Um, if we look at it from another perspective, we can actually see the sides of these cells and see that they're flat. So this would be like if instead of looking down at the pancake, instead you're actually, you pick it up, so to speak, with the spatula and kind of look at it from the side. So right here, doesn't really look like it too much, but this is one cell, but we're looking at it from the side, so it's going to appear flat. If you ever see anything that looks like this, these are going to be simple squamous cells of simple squamous epithelium. And this is actually a micrograph taken from the lungs. And so one place that we find simple squamous epithelium is going to be in structures called alveoli of the lungs, which are responsible for gas exchange. And if we think about why these cells are so thin, it's to increase the diffusion rate. Okay, because we, if you're at the lungs, you have to be able to move oxygen and carbon dioxide quickly. If the cells are thin, then the oxygen and carbon dioxide don't have to diffuse very far. If we were talking about thick cells, that would decrease the diffusion rate because oxygen and CO2 would have to diffuse for a longer period of time. Flat cells are perfect for gas exchange. So that's why we find them here. Now, one thing we're going to look at now is just one other aspect of simple squamous epithelium you need to be aware of. Um, I'll mention this, simple squamous epithelium lines the inside of blood vessels. So if you think about a blood vessel, this is, you can see these red blood cells right here, this is the lumen of the blood vessel. Remember the term lumen means a space. And notice that these epithelial cells, simple squamous that is, line that lumen, okay, and they're flat. So this is actually what we call a longitudinal section of a blood vessel. Okay, longitudinal because if we have a tube, remember, and we cut it kind of like this where this green arrow is going, we get this. And so if you imagine looking down on this or up at this, we would essentially be looking at a view like this. So this is a longitudinal section of a blood vessel. Again, you can see the blood cells in here. And if you look at these individual epithelial cells, you can see the nucleus of them. And then this lighter pink part is the cytoplasm. All right, but all of these are simple squamous epithelium. Over here on the right, this is also a blood vessel, but this is a cross section. So this is made by a transverse plane. So if we look and we cut the blood vessel, which is a tube like this, when we look at it, we're gonna be seeing a circle. So this is a transverse plane, and the cut that you get when you do that is called a cross section. So this is a cross section. Same thing we're looking at as we would look at over here, but just a different view. And this little oval right here, this is approximately where the vessel is, okay? And here's the lumen, of course. This is the space. And these cells that line that lumen are the simple squamous epithelium, okay? Again, here's the nucleus, all right, right here. And the lightish pink part around it is the cytoplasm, all right? So hopefully that makes sense. And again, Another place we find simple squamous epithelium is lining the inside of blood vessels. Now let's look at simple cuboidal epithelium. It's simple because we have one layer of cells, and it's cuboidal because each of these cells is roughly square in shape. Okay? Now notice that this one layer of cube cells are going to be typically arranged in a circle around a lumen. That's very common to see like this. Okay. You can get a longitudinal section, but generally it's going to be cross-section you're going to be looking at. Okay. So first of all, here's the lumen. This is the space. right? And also notice that we have the apical surface of each of these cells. Remember, the apical surface is the side of the epithelial cells that faces the lumen. Okay. So here's my apical surface, and you would have that all the way around these cells facing the lumen. Okay. The basement membrane is this sort of darkened gray part that surrounds uh, these cells, okay? This basement membrane anchors each of these simple cuboidal cells to the underlying connective tissue, all right? And then, of course, we have the nucleus of each of these cells, this large circle, and then the cytoplasm around it. So in this picture right here, this would be the nucleus, and then around it would, of course, be the cytoplasm. And we could even point out the plasma membranes. Those are kind of right here, okay? Just the borders of the cell. All right? And with simple cuboidal epithelium, one of the typical places you find it are the renal tubules or the kidney tubules. Those are the same thing. Okay. The next tissue is simple columnar epithelium. So simple just means it's one layer of cells, and columnar means they are column-like cells. 
So they're just regular column-like cells, and they're going to be longer than cuboidal or squamous cells. So hopefully that makes sense. So let's look at this picture right here. We see these column-like cells, okay, arranged right next to each other, and they're facing a lumen. So this area right here is going to be the lumen. So again, we have the apical surface of each of these columnar cells. Um, down here would be the basement membrane. Sometimes you have to guess a little bit where it is. You see these cells are a little bit darker than the underlying tissue, so we could guess the basement membrane is kind of right here. That's going to be anchoring the simple columnar cells to the underlying connective tissue. And then, of course, we have the nucleus of each of these cells and cytoplasm. Okay? We can look at the same stuff down here in this picture, so let's do that. Again, we have individual simple columnar cells. Okay? Here's the lumen up here. It's a thinner lumen, but we can still see it. Okay? So up here would be the apical surface. Right? And down here where my mouse is, this would actually be where the basement membrane is. Again, where it anchors these cells to the underlying connective tissue. What you'll also be able to see in simple columnar epithelium are goblet cells. This picture is much better for this. So this is a goblet cell right here. There's actually four of them. One here, a second one, this third one, and then this fourth one over here. These are goblet cells, and what they do is they secrete mucus into the lumen. Right? You do need to be able to identify the goblet cells. Right? Um, they secrete mucus into the lumen, which actually helps lubricate uh, the apical surface of the simple columnar epithelium. And one place that you typically find the simple columnar epithelium is in the lining of the small intestine. Okay? Um, now, some simple columnar cells have cilia. This will become more apparent on the next slide. Cilia are whip-like projections. They're like hairs on the apical surface of some of these cells. Simple columnar epithelium may or may not have cilia, so this is not going to be a defining characteristic of these. Okay? However, for the next tissue, ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium, these do have cilia, thus the name ciliated. Now let's break this name down because it's a little bit complicated. Pseudostratified columnar. Okay? It's pseudostratified because even though there's not truly more than one layer on top of one another, it appears that there is because the cells themselves are unevenly dispersed. Okay? If you look at the simple columnar cells, notice how the nuclei in general are pretty much all on the same level. Okay? They're not really, there's not some high up, some really low down. They're pretty much all on the same level. In contrast, in ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium, these nuclei are all at different levels. Okay? Again, really apparent here in this picture, the nuclei are all at different levels. Okay? That's because of an irregular arrangement of these cells that might make it appear as if they were stratified, which is why it's called pseudo-stratified. In general, the cells are longer than they are wide, so they are columnar cells. And so for this reason, they're pseudostratified columnar. If you look at the apical surface, which again is going to be the side facing the lumen, the apical surface has tiny hair-like projections on it. They're really visible in this picture over here. This is a very high resolution, resolution picture. Again, on the lumen side, we have the apical surface right here. And then on the apical surface, notice we have these cilia. Okay? These cilia are going to be able to beat and whip and move things through the lumen. Okay? So one of the places that you're going to find this type of tissue is in the upper respiratory tract. So it's, these cilia are going to be able to kind of beat and whip bacteria and particles um, up and expel them through the mouth so that they don't fall into the deeper respiratory structures like the lungs themselves. Okay, so that's where you're going to find this type of tissue in the upper respiratory tract. But again, a few other things to notice. Again, we have the apical surface. The basement membrane, you can see, is going to be down here, anchoring this to the underlying connective tissue. Obviously, we can see the nuclei and notice that they are all on different levels, which is a giveaway for pseudostratified columnar epithelium. The other thing is the cilia, of course, and then also notice there are goblet cells. Okay? These goblet cells right here, again, this is a much more higher resolution image up here, but these goblet cells are going to be interspersed between the pseudostratified columnar cells. This one zoomed out a little bit more, and you can see here's some more goblet cells right here labeled as G, right? So these goblet cells are going to have similar functions to the previous tissue, meaning they're going to be secreting mucus into the lumen, okay? So hopefully this makes sense. Now the very last epithelial tissue we're going to discuss here is called stratified squamous epithelium, 
Okay. Stratified squamous epithelium is the only true stratified tissue we're going to go over in this course. Okay. It's truly stratified because there are clear layers on top of layers on top of layers. There's multiple layers. Now, in stratified squamous epithelium, there are two general parts. There are superficial layers of true squamous cells. If you look up here towards the top, actually up here would be the lumen, okay, up here, but towards the top of this micrograph image, these cells are actually flat, okay? These are true squamous cells, and these are gonna be the superficial ones. The deeper ones are actually more cuboidal in shape, okay? If you look towards the bottom, they're more square-like. They're definitely not flat, but this whole thing regardless, is referred to as simple squamous epithelium, okay? Now, being that it's multiple layers, you would find this in areas where the body is subject to sheer stress, meaning there's a lot of things rubbing against that tissue. Great example is the skin, okay? So your epidermis, the outer layer of your skin, is obviously gonna be subject to a lot of mechanical stress, okay, sheer stress, that is. You're obviously moving things over your skin. Even when you put on a shirt or take off a shirt, you're rubbing things against your skin and skin cells have to be able to come off, okay? And so if this were a simple tissue, rubbing that off would be disastrous because you'd be exposing the underlying connective tissue. By having multiple layers, if you rub some of the cells off, that's okay because you've got underlying layers, many, many other layers to compensate. Okay. Um, also, you'll find this in the um, some of the digestive tract organs, particularly the esophagus. Um, if you think about it, when you consume food, there's food running down the inside of your esophagus, and that can scrape cells off also, depending on how solid the food is. And so that's going to be another place where you're subject to sheer stress or mechanical stress. Right? So basically, any place that you're subject to mechanical stress or shear stress is a good bet that you're going to find stratified squamous epithelium. Also inside uh, the female uh, reproductive organs, inside the vaginal tract, for obvious reasons, you're going to find stratified squamous epithelium there. I will also mention this for the lecture half of the course. Stratified squamous epithelium comes in one of two types, that is keratinized and non-keratinized. Um, in general, keratinized is going to be found in the skin, and for the most part, if it's internal, like the esophagus, it's going to be non-keratinized. Keratin is a really tough protein that some of these cells will have that will make them more durable. And so the skin is going to be the main place where we find stratified squamous epithelium that is keratinized. Okay? Um, that's not going to be vital for the lab, but for the lecture half of the course, it will be. And we're also going to be assigning something called an integration lab, which is online that you guys are going to do, and you're going to cover the integumentary system in there. The outer layer of the skin is called the epidermis, and what you're going to find is the epidermis is composed of keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. And when you look at this epidermis, there's going to be four or five layers depending on the type of skin. So maybe this outer part will be one layer, there will be a deeper second layer, an even deep third layer, and a very deep fourth layer, um, all within the stratified squamous epithelium. So make sure you look at that integration lab. All right, so that's all I've got here for epithelial tissues. Hopefully this made sense. In the next video, we're going to cover the same thing, but we're going to do it for connective tissues. So make sure to join me then. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.